pleasure to be here. I'm going to talk today about uh, neck masses, but just so some folks know, because uh, I'm not, I haven't been a regular. Is this a show? Regular on the show or a regular lecture? Um, I am uh, emergency medicine trained at a site that had integrated point of care ultrasound back in the like the late 80s. And then I did some PEM training and then I did a POCUS fellowship at Highland on the West Coast and came here to sick kids and started the program, which has now been nicely carried on and improved upon by Sharice and then by Mark. So it's great to be back. So I do feel like today is a little bit like this. This is like, it's old school day. <laughs> so, uh, so I haven't read anything about ultrasound since about 2012. <laughs> so you're not going to really get anything new. I'm just kidding. We'll see. Uh, but we're going to talk about neck masses. So I want to really thank Mark uh, for giving me this topic. But, you know, if nothing else, talking today did, did give me a chance to bring back something special. And that was our logo. Yeah. <laughs> My favorite logo of all time. It seems to have disappeared. And so I'm bringing it back. The ball. All right, just for this talk. So uh, like I said, uh, we're going to talk about uh, neck swelling, neck masses. Um, I'll make this a little bit interactive if I can. Um, try to include the rest of the, the live studio audience here. All right. So the objectives for today. Um, my objectives are really to help you recognize the advantage of POCUS for use in the assessment of the neck, neck masses, and to demonstrate several common um, diagnoses to improve your decision making in the emergent setting. So just as always been my tradition, I'd like to start off with just a reminder kind of about point of care ultrasound. And the first is really what advantage it gives us. Now we're all pretty climatized to point of care ultrasound. And so we forget a little bit that it allows us to see anatomy that we can't see without it. It really gives us another piece of the puzzle. And it allows us to make decisions in a more expedited fashion because we can use this technology at the bedside and use it quickly. So there's a timeliness. But to really master the technology, we need to be able to acquire the image, we need to be able to interpret the image, we need to be able to understand the limitations and we need to be able to integrate it well. And today with neck mass, you know, the acquisition of a neck mass is not that challenging, but I think the interpretation, the understanding of limitations, and then the integration are kind of the three key components. So think about that as we go on. And then just as with all things in point of care ultrasound, your setting and where you are in the world really dictates um, how you use the technology and the pathologies you see. So we'll, we'll be a little bit North American centric today. We won't talk about scrofulous too much, um, but we'll try to stick with the things we see here. Just being aware that throughout the rest of the world, neck masses may be different in different populations. You may see some different things. So first we'll get really to the technical piece, not much to talk about, but um, just for the live studio audience. So what kind of frequency are we gonna use? What are we gonna, what kind of transducer are we gonna use? Oh, that's a reference no one else is gonna get. <laughs> this is for all, I told you, we're going old school. Okay. Old school today. What kind of transducer would we use to look at neck masses? Linear probe. Linear probe. High frequency. High frequency. And what's the advantage of that? Why are we using that? Good resolution for something that is close to the probe. Right because we're talking about shallow structures, so we want to get the best picture we can. Uh, for those of you not aware of REM, this is, uh, this is a reference to a song uh, called What's the Frequency, Kenneth? It was, uh, it was a song about generational strife, and so I think that may be appropriate today. All right, so let's go on and do some cases, because uh, cases are how we learn best. So case one, wait a minute, no black. No. So case one, <laughs> eight-year-old male, right-sided neck mass times four days, now with one day of fever, has a history of viral illness for 10 days, says it hurts to move his neck, denies headache or emesis, no weight loss, there are the vital signs. So we take our high-frequency linear transducer, put some gel on it, and we look at this image. So what are we seeing here? Who wants to describe what we see? 
Not everybody at once. For those following at home, we're waiting for the live studio audience to answer. All right. A round shaped structure with vessels in the middle. Right. That is homogeneous. Yeah. So you see kind of this a little bit maybe circular ovoid structure. Looks like there's blood flow through the central hilum. So if you're looking, what this what is this? What are we seeing? Lymph node. Lymph node. And what are we interested in this particular case? What are we looking for? So we wanted to identify what the structure was, but what's the real question? What, what when we're looking at lymph nodes in particular? Right. So we're talking and, and we we've mentioned before that when we're looking, we're kind of looking at this spectrum, right? Of lymphadenitis to some kind of abscess formation. It's a spectrum. And so what are the components of that spectrum? Well, some people would tell you size, right? Lymph nodes should be about a centimeter at the mandible, about a centimeter and a half. And anything bigger than that, something's going on, whether it's inflamed or infected. But there are some things that we look for in particular that help us as we go along the spectrum to tell whether or not something has become an abscess. Who knows what some of those things are? Shape. Shape. So what in particular about the shape? From oval to round. From oval to round, yeah. So we have shape. What else? Blood flow. Blood flow. And what, what would be normal blood flow for lymph node? Central hilum. Central hilum, like we saw in the example, going to more peripheral. Flow inside. More peripheral. Yeah, a peripheral, kind of circular, right? Blood flow. And then one more. What do we see? Homogenous, heterogeneous. Right, so the architecture. Has it gone from being kind of homogenous or having, not necessarily homogenous, but having the architecture of a lymph node to, to having that disappear? So size, shape, blood flow, architecture. And then there's a couple other things. One, one more thing that I think can help us that we don't think about all the time. And then surrounding tissue, you can also yeah. look at sinusoidal tissue around. Exactly. Are we seeing some of that change in the soft tissues around? And is that, I just asked Mark here, who's the expert in hot fat, is that still considered hot fat in the neck? I would think so. Any fat that gets hot is hot fat. Hot fat. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> um, perfect. So, after what we've talked about, what do we see here? What do we think? Little kidney. Little kidney. No. <laughs> <laughs> so we're seeing, some, we're going to look at some lymph nodes. Tell me where you think we are in the spectrum. Some high so I think we're transitioning towards an abscess. So it's, it's a little bit different than the previous. We still see some the high center, center of the cyborg so areas peripherally. So 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 that becomes a bit changed as well. Like anechoic, surrounding. Anechoic. Within? Which is some signs of maybe suffocation. So, but well, we see these little hypoechoic yeah. follicles. And I can kind of go with lymphadenitis. So, here we're seeing some lymphadenitis kind of very early on. Now let's look at this image. What do you think of this one? What do you think about the shape? Well, rounder. Round. Less old. It wouldn't flow on it, but it's round already. What do you think of the architecture? It's lost. It's not you don't see, like, the fall. You you don't see the fall. So are we kind of further on the spectrum to abscess? I think so. Yeah, right. Could be an abscess. So let's put a flow on it. What do we think? A lot of peripheral. Yeah. Like Ring of fire. What song is that from? Who's Johnny Johnny Cash? Burning Ring of Fire? No. All right. So everybody's pretty pretty comfortable with this idea of the shape changing, the flow changing. Let's look at another one. What's what's kind of the tell in this image? Multiple echoical points. You see central hyalur flow. No. Just kind of felt on the outside. What do you think about the surrounding tissue? Hot fat. Hot fat. Not the hottest fat, I think, right? But maybe like lukewarm fat. Um, yeah.